Good day, Africa, and welcome to AAU Talks. And AAU Talks is brought to you by the Association of African Universities Headquarters here in Accra, Ghana. My name is Kwesi Sam. And today on AAU Talks, we will be discussing education collaboration, collaborative, and we are so much privileged to have wonderful guests from four different universities, and they're going to help us discuss education collaborative. Don't forget that you can join a discussion via our social media platforms, Association of African Universities on Facebook, and AAU underscore 67 on Twitter. We'll go for a short break, and when we return, I will let you know my guests. Stay tuned. The education ecosystem across the African continent is evolving. If you look around the continent today, there are a lot of institutions starting up. So I think we've reached a moment where, with a bit of intentionality about what we're doing, we can really change the game in Africa. Working towards this vision, Ashesi University presents the Education Collaborative, a six-day residential immersive workshop for African educators to share and co-design best practices. The Education Collaborative is the beginning of a network of institutions on the continent that are driving towards uh, improving higher education and in particular focusing on the liberal arts and sciences as well as innovation and ethics. This would be a platform for university leaders and stakeholders to collaborate in teaching, management and administration. Looking at our mission and our vision of a new Africa, we cannot do it alone. So it's high time we shared what we've learned and then pick new things from others so that together we can get Africa to where we want it to be. This first collaborative workshop from the 4th to the 9th of June will have facilitators and speakers from Ashesi and other African institutions. I'm excited to be sharing some of the things that we are doing here with like-minded people, other people who really have new Africa uh, at heart. What I want to share is how do you get everybody in an institution to buy into the brand promise of an institution? And I'm very excited about this uh, education collaborative because I think it's a chance for us uh, to multiply. So my session will be on student-centered learning experiences. And I think we'll focus on how we see the students. What, what is our philosophy when it comes to learning? How do you really teach somebody something? I think this is a very exciting journey that we're setting up on, and so I'm very much looking forward to it. Welcome from the break, and to most of you who are just um, watching, education collaborative may be a new term for you. You may not even understand. You are still wondering what is it about, and that is what we are discussing this morning, and we have um, the guest in here, but let me let you know that Education Collaborative is a special initiative of Ashesi University. And Ashesi University is one of the best private universities that we have in Africa. And they have created a platform to bring academics, um, to bring the entire universities on the continent together to see how best they can collaborate. And we have the project manager in the person of Miss Rose Dodd, and she will throw more light on Education Collaborative. Rose, you are welcome to AU Talks. Thank you. How are you doing? Very well. Great. Thank you. Now, Rose didn't come alone. She came with some of her participants, those who took part in the first and the second editions of um, Education Collaborative Workshop. And it's so much important that as we discuss this subject, we have some of our participants to tell and also recount their experience. And so we have also Mr. Kwesi Ousu Enchi from the Methodist University and he is a lecturer um, with the marketing department. Welcome, sir. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great, sir. Great. We also have Miss um, Hita Beam, or Heta Beam, and she is with Ashesi University as well. And I, I so much love that we have a female um, in engineering department, mm -hmm. and it's so much amazing. And so she is a lecturer with the Faculty of Engineering. You are welcome, madam. Thank you very much. How are you doing also? I'm doing great. Great. We have our, one of our very own, and I'm saying very own because wherever we go as AAU, we find her. She's very instrumental on the continent, and especially providing um, ICT education on the continent as well. And we are so much privileged to have also Eva Esther Schelling. 
and she is the dean school of business and um, that is the blue crest college you thank are welcome you so much, eva thank you so much. we are so much um, happy and privileged to have you yes, as well so we know you are going to share so much with us sure. thank you so great and the last um, participant or the guest to be introduced is in the person of mr benjamin Amakwa, and he is with accra technical university as an account and finance officer yes sir. great thank you. and so you can you can tell that once we have the finance and account offices as as part of um, the the participant for the workshop it is very much extensive it doesn't only look like um, look at only the academics alone lecture, lecture in the accounting and finance department. oh amazing so he is a lecturer actually that that's beautiful uh, so let me go back to you miss rose so that you throw more light on education collaborative why did ashesi university come up with this initiative okay um so it's very true to Ashesi's vision to be a very open university. Okay. We are um, a very learning-centered institution. Mm. Um, you know, starting up um, over 15 years ago, we um, really got a lot of help from okay. the institutions outside of Africa mm. and even some within Africa that collaborated with us in building up our systems, in you know, shaping our culture. So um, doing this is our way of saying uh, we also want to be open with other institutions on the continent. We want to share what we have learned, you know, in building our institution from academics to management, uh, management as well as administration. So that's the main reason for starting this. You know, how can we spread our impact? How can we sp spread what we, we know? Okay, and what, what is actually the focus? What do you want to achieve? Um, if you want to bring the universities on the continent together, mm -hmm. what, what, is, what is the focus? What do you want to achieve? You know, at Ashesi, our ultimate um, goal is to cause a renaissance in Africa, okay. you know, um, to see an Africa where um, graduates are ethical, entrepreneurial leaders. Um, so doing this, we want to really, in our own small way, contribute to transforming higher education in Africa. Um, because, you know, we, we see the products that our, our students come okay. out as being, and we want to contribute as much as we can um, to help other institutions who are committed to the same vision, um, you know, achieve that with their graduates as well. That's amazing. Okay. And so for how long has this initiative been in existence? Um, we started thinking about it in 2016, okay. the first, um, um, should I say, the first workshop on this okay. um, happened in 2017, and then the second one, 2018. That's so great. we've been going for maybe three years now. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. let, let me get to you, uh, Mr. Benjamin. You were a participant of, of this great um, initiative, and I want to call it initiative more than a workshop because I know it's 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 spanning for a very long time. Right. Yeah, great. How was it for you um, as a participant? It was very exciting because over the years we've heard a lot about Ashasi. We know what they do, and so looking at our background, where I'm coming from, in a public university where okay. we don't have some of the things that they do, okay. I was looking at how best we can also inculcate some of the good things they do in our curriculum and in the way we do things at Accra Tech University. So the first workshop was very nice, very interesting. We learned new things, new ideas. We looked at the blueprints, um, the um, value fulfillment blueprints. Okay. Very comprehensive, very detailed. It basically helps you to structure your systems, your processes, so that from the time a student enters the university till he gets out, he has a timeline, mm -hmm. you're able to track, monitor progress. We didn't have such robust systems in our organizations. So when I came back, we shared some of these ideas we also looked at uh, the challenges we had, especially with leadership and ethics, especially from public institutions where that was next to zero. So we didn't really have courses dedicated to teaching leadership, to teaching ethics. Mm -hmm. And you could tell from the way our students behave okay. that they had very little when it comes to that. So how then do we incorporate leadership and ethics? So they took us through how they teach that in their schools. We came back and then Thankfully, for the first semester of every academic year, I decided to collaborate with Rose. Okay. So she comes down, and then we have a leadership section with our students. And it had proved successful because for the first time, I had seen changes in the way first-year students that I teach behave. For the first time, I've had students uh, writing examinations without anybody omitting index numbers, doing everything according to and lay down processes, procedures, which was very impressive because it's never happened in my class. 
you always have scripts where students don't have index numbers, they omit things, they do that. But that alone uh, served as a motivator, meaning that, okay, it means they have something good that we can always learn from. Learn from. And so it's helped me a lot and it's helped the class. And now we are looking at expanding it. That was just one class. So once you build a class, then you can begin to go to other classes. And then virtually everybody in the school comes on board. So that is what has happened. Okay. Eva, let me, let me take your experience and sure. as, as a participant. What was it for you? Yes. The first and foremost thing what I would say is like it was one of a very rich kind because it is not just the participants from Ghana. We had participants from so many other African countries. And so we could learn from each other. Some areas we were having common issues and so we could just deliberate on them and we could find solutions. And some areas we were having common, like common grounds where we could just learn from each other. Exactly. And uh, this collaborative is wonderful, kind of, and I think I cherish all the memories. And we are like a family now. Mm -hmm. So when we do any event, we just call each other, and then we, we we are facilitating each other, and we are helping each other, and we are growing. And I think that's one thing which which Asashi has helped us. And we were so comfortable. We were feeling at home. And I was telling Rose the other day, like, and you go to many conferences, but you don't feel just part of it the very first day okay. and I think hats off to them they did it very very well extremely well and so we were we were feeling part of it and we are now like extended family, family. to Asashi and that, so we are I think that is a great vision because normally we see people they want to be in their own work, small corner you we know we want not to share yes, yes, yes you see so now where there's a person who's willing and open you mm -hmm. know and so we are also there the same thing is going to just be extended you are going to see, I think, what Rose said, a renaissance in Africa. And we are not just going to groom one group of people who are just going to fight for, you know, great leadership. No, we are going to raise everybody the same standard, high-level Africans. Great. And it's amazing that uh, uh, we have Heather from the same university, but participated in, in, the, in the workshop or conference. How was it for you? It was, it was a fantastic experience. Okay. So I had just started teaching one course at Ashesi before I attended the program. Mm. So although I was in the institution, there was still a lot that I gained from the workshop because okay. I, got, I got to go much more in depth. Uh, one thing that I really valued about the program is that we had we went fairly detailed into certain courses that Ashesi offers. Mm. So it wasn't a high level picture. We actually went down into you know, the course outline and got to see on a quite detailed scale what some of the lecturers do and it helps me even though I was already there it helps me get a better picture of you know what things can I focus on and student centered really came out um, how can we best interact with students what is what is kind of the style that Ashesi has okay. set as a standard for faculty student interaction okay great and how, how, how was it for you also yeah let's see, uh, for me it was uh, it was challenging Transformation and also refreshing. Okay. Now let me let me explain this. So it's refresh that uh, there are there, there are a lot of things that we know, but then we go, we see them do it differently. So then we need to le learn the new things that they're also doing. And then it also present a challenge to you that maybe some 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 of the things that you do, I mean you have to modify it so that you could get your student uh, get involved. Okay. So that uh, people don't just pass through your hands. I mean, it's so disastrous if students just pass through school, that the school passes passing through, through them. them. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think uh, the, the workshop offered me the opportunity. So now I've been challenged to step up my, my way of delivering and then also share the knowledge okay. with other, uh, other faculty members in my school and other places. Okay. So uh, as a programs manager, how do you feel just listening to people recounting their, their experiences and stories after the workshop? Oh, it's, it's really amazing, you mm -hmm. know, um, because in as much as we, you know, Ashasi just wanted to open up for institutions to learn as much as mm -hmm. they come from us, we also um, were looking to learn from institutions, well. you know. Um, the, just this morning we were talking about how um, I suddenly have a, a, a class size increase from say 40 to 50 and I'm freaking out. Mm. But we have institutions who have been handling class sizes of 100, 200, 300, 300 you know. Especially the, the public universities. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it wasn't just about us just sharing, but we also learned a lot, you know, okay. which is why we also had part
participants from Ashesi University okay, um, taking, in part taking part of it. So it's, it's, it's good for me. It's just amazing because I know that, like I said, this renaissance, you know, mm -hmm. we've, we've, we've started it and we, you know, we're going to keep working at it. Great. Let, let me draw so much on you because okay. you are the programs manager and so we want you to tell us a bit more. Mm. For example, I know this is not just about workshops, but no. there are a lot of other initiatives that you want to, to do. Now, what are the objectives? What is the work plan? What is the scope of education collaborative mm -hmm. for the entire continent? Okay. So um, the education collaborative really, it's a network. Okay. That's what we are trying to build here, right? We are trying to build a network and a platform on which this network interacts uh, with each other. Um, and our vision is that we'll bring together all universities on the African continent to share their strategies in teaching, in learning, in university management, and university administration. Um, as much as possible, we want to tackle, tackle like real challenges where we face, right? So not just teachers in the classroom, but then also, you know, maybe a dean or um, 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 admissions officer, you know, all of these challenges that we face. Um, and we, we, really, we really want to approach it in a different way from just a conference, okay. right? Uh, you know, you sometimes ap uh, um, attend conferences, you hear presentations, and then you go back home and, you know, yeah, you're taking some it. notes, you're unable to implement exactly. it. So we do have a workshop, mm. which is not a conference, it's a workshop. Okay. It's led by participants of the workshop. So it's not just led by Ashesi University faculty or staff. Participants also lead um, sessions based on their experiences in their classrooms or in their offices. Um, but we don't leave it there. Mm -hmm. By the end of the workshop, which is a residential workshop, because we really want by the end of it that you build a relationship okay. with participants okay. so that you can follow up. By the end of it, we all set goals. What do we want to do over the next 10, 11 months before we meet, to again. meet again. Okay. Um, and what we as managers or administrators do is we follow up with each institution on the goals we've set. Um, so maybe you wanted to try our technology in your classroom. Have you tried it? Um, do you need more support from another institution, from Ashesi University? Um, basically, we uh, over the course of the year, the post, so that's what we call post um, workshop projects, yeah. where participants collaborate with each other, call on each other, get support from Ashesi and each other to carry out the, you know, the goals we've set for okay. the year. Um, so we do have the workshops, we have the post projects, and then we are starting a new um, part of the collaborative we call the mentorship program, which is more one on one with Ashesi. Okay. So if a, an institution signs up for this mentorship program, what will happen is that institution gets more in-depth, you know, um, work with Ashesi, where it's like mainly Ashesi and that institution. The institution could come, sit in our classes, faculty exchanges, student exchanges, um, you know, more extensive okay. uh, than just a workshop and follow us. Um, that's still in development. You okay. know, um, right. But yeah, so that's really the scope of it. Great. So <laughs> what, what do you do differently that other universities would have to come to Ashesi to learn because Ashesi has been in existence uh, for some oh, yeah, few yes. years mm -hmm. but everywhere you go people when people are making reference to initiatives that are innovative and transformational you hear Ashesi University and I think uh, the, the Patrick and the team are doing a good job but why what do you have that other in institutions would want to come to you and let me not ask you because let me mm -hmm. go to your participant yeah that would be very That's much refreshing yeah. and Eva why would you go to Ashesi University to to tap into their knowledge, to tap into their experiences. What is different from, I, I, I shall say, okay, that you your university yeah. is doing or not doing? Yes, okay, the first and foremost thing will be the practical aspect. Okay. They just don't stand there and teach. Mm. Anything and everything, they just relate, they make learning relatable, that's all very simple. Okay. So you know, it is, it is, it is imbibed in the student, mm. you know, to understand the concept, not, not just the normal learn, uh, you know, chew, poor, 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 the and learning. forget. Let okay. me add the forget also. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so that is not what they are doing. Okay. You know, so ev even during our collaborative, every session had the practical aspect of it. Mm. So you know, so it was it was making us understand that this way would work. Mm. So for me at Blue Cross College, I've already started. So this semester, for the business school, it's two hours of theory, one hour of practical, compulsory for every. 
course you see so this is already we have already started because we wanted to that really works okay. that really works okay. and so that is that is the i think the uh, one of the things we, one of the many things that they are doing which is very different okay. and then it means for you yes. you need to get your faculty to really come to terms with it yes we, i've it? already done the okay. training for them with the collaborators all of them who are here they came there Wonderful. and we did we did the training for both part-time and full-time lecturers and amazing. so they all know what we are up to and so they are also very happy and eager to go about Great. That is a wonderful take home for you. Sure. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. Let me come to you, sir. Yes. Um, what, what is so different from what you do in your school that yes. Ashesi does that you would really want to go to Ashesi? Um, one of the major things we realized was their curriculum. They teach what we call the liberal arts. They do the liberal arts okay. education. We do regular, normal stuff. So in developing new curriculum for our new programs, um, we have also incorporated some of the liberal arts courses mm -hmm. into the courses we have designed. Currently, for the banking and finance program, they are going to do computer programming okay. as part of the course. The first time that is being done in the institution and it's been accredited. So, starting this academic year, the students who take the BTEC would do programming as part of oh, okay. the banking and finance course. The same courses have been had. Some courses like that have also been added mm -hmm. to the accounting and finance courses where they'll be doing some liberal arts courses in addition to their core courses, which okay. makes it quite different or unique compared right. to what the other tech universities are running. Right. Okay. So that is one thing we picked from. Um, Ashesi. from Ashesi. Yes. Amazing. Heather, what did you also pick up? From your own <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm pretty new there again, so it's, okay. it's still a fair question. Mm -hmm. I think to me, part of what makes Ashesi stand out is similar to what Benjamin was just sharing. Sure. That okay. They're really focused on the whole student, not just you know putting in a bunch of technical knowledge, but building out a full person that is a leader, can think and act ethically, is uh, action oriented. All of these things. Um, then I think the second thing is that the team at Ashesi is committed to innovation. Okay. I think that everyone there that I've interacted with is trying something new. They're willing to kind of experiment and test things out. And I think that really helps the system keep moving forward. Great. Mustafis. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you put it, Mustafis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I, I think um, from the workshop, mm. I think um, my, my, my first initiative uh, was to write about what I learned to management. Okay. And luckily, I, I had a, to, uh, to go ahead to from organize a workshop. Okay. I'm not in a position to change things as Eva. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have to start from somewhere. somewhere. And the first thing that got in the not to organize the workshop, we can invite all of them anyway. Mm -hmm. And then from there, there was a, a model that was presented on the workshop, mm -hmm. uh, but that wasn't from Shasi, but from Kepler in Rwanda, which I think uh, I'm writing, I'm trying to uh, write this paper on to management and probably to other universities. Mm. You, you know, now we have a lot of uh, students from the senior high mm. failing mathematics mm. and English. English and yes. because of that, a lot of them cannot go to university. university. So okay. I'm, I'm thinking of, see if you can adopt that system here, first in my university, mm. and then other, where others would also, like, so that instead of students writing the medias over and over, and over, over again. getting them frustrated and so on, if that model can be implemented, I think it would help the, the entire yeah, sure. education system. Okay. okay, that's amazing. Let me come back to you, Rose. Um, in terms of participants, how did you get the, the participant or who is eligible to be part of the collaborative um, network? Who is eligible? Okay, um, so <laughs> who is eligible? Mm -hmm. um, if you are an individual or an institution in education in Africa, mm -hmm. um, we are mainly focused on higher education, yes, okay. but then we also had um, institutions from high school, level, okay. you know. Um, so if you are, you know, an individual, an institution like that, who is really committed to um, educating and graduating students who are leaders, who are ethical, who are entrepreneurial, then yeah, you are eligible. 
really because we we want like-minded institutions okay. who who believe in this vision okay. um because then we can innovate together we can figure out the strategies that work on our continent you know because sometimes when we borrow strategies it doesn't quite really work, work you know yeah. um and and even at Chessy when we started yes we do do liberal arts but we have when you think about it we really do a blended liberal arts mm -hmm. we don't do it just like we borrowed it okay. we had to make it fit our context in africa so that's the type of institution that we reach out for okay so the first um, the first workshop how many um, universities participated oh for the you mean in 2017 2017 2018 we had 27 participants from 12, 14 institutions, 17 institutions okay. participated in 2018. On the yes, from okay. the continent. Okay. Um, in 2017, we had um, 12 institutions participate in 2017. Um, we've had so one of our strategies in in in, in um, inviting institutions. We we work with AL, AAU actually, um, sending the communication out through AAU. Very very um, helpful. Uh, because you have a broader network exactly. of institutions around Africa. Uh, we just advertise through that. Um, and then also um, other organizations that focus on, hi on higher education in Africa. We, ha we had institutions from East Africa, okay. um, from West Africa, S from South, South Africa. Africa. Um, and I think that mainly from those three areas. Okay. Do you have anyone from the and North? Then we <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we couldn't get anyone coming from the, the Northern Africa. Northern no, Africa, not no, yet. Okay. not yet. Yeah. Not okay. yet. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Amazing. In fact, mm -hmm. what what are the plans? Um, I know you are still working with those in Ghana mm -hmm. to as a means of follow up on mm -hmm. the initiative or mm -hmm. the take homes that they they picked from the, right. the workshop. What about those who are outside Ghana? What are the strategies in place to make sure that they are also able to implement the very things that mm -hmm. you talked about? We are not only working with those in Ghana. Okay. We are working with the institutions that came from Zimbabwe, okay. Nigeria. Um, Niger, Niger um, um, Rwanda, 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 Mauritius. Mauritius. Yeah, we are working because we follow up with them as well by email, by phone call, and also we have scheduled visits um, to some of these institutions. Not all of them, all but of them. to some of these institutions. Um, we also trying to set up a platform more online, a website where uh, we would have sort of an edX you know, forum where we can still create, you know, mini workshops, but online. You know, um, and also even follow up online. Okay. Yeah. We also have a closed LinkedIn group, and yes. we have a WhatsApp group. It's very well, effective uh, and everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So from Thank time you. to time, you can have <laughs> online meetings yes. and everything like exactly. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Must must I pay to be part of the network? <laughs> to no, you do not ha need okay. to pay to be a part of the network. Okay. Um, you do pay to attend the workshop. The workshop. Yes, okay. because it's usually four to five days mm -hmm. residential. So that that has a cost. But to be a part of the network, no, not at all. Okay. Yeah. Then it means that the workshop can be held in any other country yes. uh, as time goes yes. on, not yes. only in, yes. in Ghana. Exactly. We'll go for a break, and when we return, <laughs> I'll be asking you your views on higher education on the continent okay. and why we think that we need to refocus and then look at new things that will improve um, the continent as well. Viewers, you are still watching AU Talks, and we are discussing education collaborative, um, which is uh, an initiative by Ashesi University. Stay tuned. We are going for a short break. We'll be back. My name is uh, Dr. Violet Makuku, a quality assurance expert with the Association of African Universities. The Association of African Universities is here with the African Quality Rating Mechanism, internal institutional evaluation tool that can help you improve the quality of higher education, whether it is in teaching and learning, in ICT, in infrastructure, financial management, uh, university management, and all the other aspects uh, whose quality should be monitored in the university. Kindly follow the provided links for you to understand more about the African Quality Rating Mechanism, institutional evaluation process, and also to get hold of the form that you can use to express interest. AAU, the voice of higher education, and you are still watching AU Talks on AU TV, and we are discussing education collaborative. And my guests are still here. And before we left for the break, we were looking at some of the initiatives that they, they have come up with and how they are following up on their participants to ensure that 
they are able to implement the, the, the take home. That is one of the basic challenges that we have on the continent. We attend workshops and implementation becomes a problem. But we are so much happy that ASHESI has its own way of making sure that it follows up on the participant to implement the very things that they have taught them. But let me come to you, my wonderful guest, again. And we are looking at the details, the specifics of what the vision that you want to achieve in terms of teaching, in terms of learning, in terms of research, and then community engagement. That is, or these are the pillars of every university. Let me go to you, Eva. In terms of um, teaching, do you think um, in our universities we are using the right methodology? Our academics have the pedagogical skills, they are teaching well. What is your assessment and what do you make of it? Okay, I think we, in Ghana for 14 years, so I think I can okay. just say this. I think we have to grow uh, mm. a bit more and because the world is a growing place and it's growing rapidly and faster so Africa cannot be left behind. Yeah. And uh, I think technology is one of the aspects. Like now we are able to broadcast this stream live exactly. TV, you see. So this is one of the methods which you're using. And I think AU is doing very wonderful in, in promoting uh, you know, education at a very higher level. And so that is one of the things which are, I think we are not yet there, but we are getting there. OK, great. Mr. Benjamin, what do you think? Yes. In terms of teaching, terms uh, of do we have the right pedagogies? The methodology is helping, like the rote learning and everything. Uh, are we there yet? The, the, there will be the need to modify what we do currently. Okay. So, for us as a university, for example, because we are technical in nature, mm. um, focus now is on competence based learning. learning okay. So, as part of our curriculum now, students are supposed to do internships. And the internships now used to be eight months, eight, eight weeks, mm. but now it's been extended to six months. So for six months, you go out there, go and practice all that you have learned, and then come back. Okay, so that will now equip the student so that when he goes to the job market, he's not going to start learning things, but by the time he's done with school, he would have gotten the basic skills that he requires to go and start work. Okay, so, so there are a lot the, of things we need there to do. There are a lot of things we need to do. The okay. challenge is how to get placements for a lot of these students because of the numbers we tend to deal with. But now we are having um, collaboration with other institutions where they do virtual internships. Mm -hmm. So uh, professionals and uh, experts will come and then in a classroom setting, they use technology to do the internship. So for those who don't have placements on the job itself, they still do the internship in the classroom. Okay. And then the setting is more like a typical workplace setting, okay. which is helping us. So we've been doing that for the past one and a half, two years now. Okay. And uh, it's helped a lot. Okay. It's helped a lot. Okay. Peter, what do you think um, in terms of teaching on a continent? Um, that I know there's a long way for us uh, as a continent in terms of teaching and learning. But what do you make of our current teaching um, and learning systems in our schools? And what do you think we must do to improve them? Yeah, so for the last three years, I've been in Ghana running an NGO that does training program for teachers at the basic level in STEM and science and math. And from my little time in the university, I think some of the same challenges exist in both places, which okay. is that um, there's not as much practical piece to the teaching and learning as, as one would hope. Um, and I think one thing that would be great is if we can focus less on trying to cram a lot of information in the curriculum and say, this is you know the length, this huge bucket of information that needs to get into the student. And um, focus more on transforming the student okay. through the classroom experience. I think if we can do that, it will go a long way. Okay. In Methodist University, is it, is it a same? I don't know. You know, traditionally, mm -hmm. in, 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 in almost all Ghanaian institutions, it used to be teacher, teacher will come, lecturer will come, download the information on students. And I think uh, a wise man once said, it's, uh, it's good to learn to unlearn, you know that we learn, they unlearn. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what that means is that there are certain practices that are obsolete now yeah. that we have to download them mm -hmm. so that we, may, we, we learn new, new. things. Okay. So, now I will, I will, I'm the same uh, level with Benjamin, where we uh, have to talk about uh, internship and so on. As he said, the difficulty is getting placement for students, even though it's part of our, the, the curriculum for students. Then, 
in, in recent times, I, I believe that they, they need to move away from that kind of teacher preaching the gospel, mm -hmm. then get the and students. Student listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's not about uh, an inclusive learning, mm -hmm. making the learning readable and mm -hmm. transformational so that the students, after sitting at your feet, know that even though they, even if they don't get the opportunity to do the work, uh, do internship outside, at least using a uh, case study based approach and so on, students can learn more so that they can relate theories to real life situation. Okay, but why, why do you think it's a bit difficult for students from our public universities, let me use the public universities, all our universities in general, to get placed um, on internship program? You, you often hear the industries telling them that there's no space. You tell, they will tell you that we cannot pick you up for, for internship. Why, why is this? Is it because they don't trust the, the, the quality of our students that come into their institutions? Okay. Uh, because you see, the problem has been with the kind of curriculum that we have. Okay. Right? You know, to, in some, to some people, one plus one has always been two. two. Right? But in, in recent uh, issues in strategy and innovation, one plus one can be three or ten. Depends on how you are able to justify it. Okay. So industries are most cases do not trust the kind of product that product comes from. So if institutions would make it more practical approach so that if you are why is it that um, once students from certain institutions are easily embraced mm -hmm. whilst others the good is mm -mm, we don't want to we don't want to because of the kind of uh, the curriculum that they have. So I think there should be a conscious efforts, but a conscious, it's a sustained and deliberate effort to revive uh, uh, our content, to make it more practical, so that the industries will trust where that are coming from, universities. Okay, let me, let me come back to you, um, Rose. Uh, often than not, you hear that industry players come to the doors of Ashesi and not. Please, we want your student for attention. We want to employ your students, and I know you have very few students who go unemployed after graduation. I don't know if that is true, but I know it, it is. What are you doing differently in Ashesi in terms of teaching and learning? Um, well, at Ashesi, I would say that um, I think somebody may, Heather mentioned mm -hmm. earlier on that we look at a student more holistically. Exactly. Right? So it's not just about a student coming to the classroom and getting you know the content in the classroom. I mean, focus on transforming the students at the end of the day. So it's not just come and get the technical knowledge and then figure everything else out. You know. So for example, what I teach in the classroom is connected to the career services department. Mm -hmm. They know what I'm teaching in my classroom. Okay. Um, student services and counseling departments knows what I'm teaching in my classroom, you know, the registry or admissions or it's all interconnected um, because at the end of the day, our goal is that the student that comes out can really survive in a work environment okay. in our context, you know. First, the student matches with the needs of the industry um, technically, you know, so the, sub the actual core subjects. And then the students also will survive in you know the culture of industry or um, um, in how uh, professional prof professionals should behave you know in industry. I mean it's not it's not perfect even at Ashesi University you know we still have a lot of room to grow um, and that's one of the reasons why we open up to learning as well. Okay, and in terms of research, how are we faring as a as a as a continent? We can just limit it to Ghana. In terms of research um, in our institutions, let me go back to. Um, Accra Technical University? Yes, do you, do um, you have we do quite a number of research. The challenge has been that sometimes the quality is the same thing we tend to have mm. recycled. But now that we have broadened the scope of the curriculum, okay. we should get a lot more, more detailed research. Mm -hmm. And then because the course is, like in our case, for example, for the BTEC program, students are supposed to pick their research topics from where they did their internships okay. because while you are doing your internship you would have identified some issues some challenge that needs to be addressed mm -hmm. and so your research should have to come from that place so you don't just pick research that has already been done you read literature you summarize and then 
yeah. you just find some loopholes and say, I've Basically, it's a recycle mm -hmm. of what That's has already been done. But mm -hmm. this time around, because you're on the field, you'd have identified some key issues. Okay. And then you pick your research from there, and then your project is done. So that will give us a much better way of tackling research and solving problems okay. as against what we have currently in the system. Currently, you know that there's so much um, focus on the technical universities, yeah. so you have a lot of um, interventions to, to bring in because, you know, if, if the continent or the country will develop, we yes. so much depend on the you and things that you want to do, and that is amazing. But let me go to you, Eva. Yes, you know, um, uh, when you were just talking about yeah. research, I was nodding my head to whatever he was saying. saying exactly. It's very true, like the industry and education, you know, those of us in academia and the industry, there is a large gap. Okay. So what he was saying, it was very appealing because it is so important that we make sure that we get that connect. Not only that, the problem with our researchers is we do our research and it is just lying down there here as a book. Mm -hmm. What is that we are implementing? The dissemination of the information and the consistent monitoring and evaluation of that research outcome is, is what is, 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 the, is the key to success. So then we are researching and we are making sure that we are just getting the funding and then we are researching and we are sitting in our own corner. And, your and we are, yes, we are getting our promotions. Well. But the link between the industry, the community, the educational uh, organizations yes, it's, are it's the amazing. Great. Then let me come to you, um, Heather. How different is it for Access University in terms of research? I can't speak to that in depth because oh, okay. I'm not familiar enough with the research going on at okay. HSE. But one thing I did want to say is that um, in the U.S., where I did all my education, mm -hmm. there's a huge. In the last few years, there's been a huge increase in the amount of student research that goes on to okay. the extent that you can't really even get into a graduate program unless you have shown some significant student research. So I think it will be interesting to see if we can also get to that level in Ghana where we have so much research going on that the students are necessarily getting involved and quite active in that. Great. Chrissy, is it, is it different? Um, let's see. <laughs> you know, uh, Ghanaian, uh, there, there are a lot of research work that are going on, mm. even amongst our students. And you see that you see students coming out with very good research but as Eva said, just end up at the school's library. Mm -hmm. Doesn't go anywhere. I, I think going forward, uh, I think um, research should be industry focused. Okay. So that if uh, either as uh, sponsors, you know that at the end of the day, when I come out with this research, it's going to help promote this aspect of um, the industry. Okay. So it shouldn't be just a requirement an academic setting mm -hmm. shouldn't be just a requirement for us academic for promotion. Mm -hmm. exactly. No, we can just do anything. Yeah. You know, students sometimes when they supervise their work, they bring the topic and start laughing mm -hmm. because if we uh, supervise that work over and over again, <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> I mean, they have the what we call the grandfather or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> grandfather or whatever. But then, as I said, going forward, it should be industry focused, okay. and then uh, supervisors should not just uh, supervise anything. Mm -hmm. you know, at least you guide the student in such a way that they come out of something that would contribute to ne not just knowledge, mm -hmm. but contribute to national development. Okay, amazing. Let me come back to you, um, Rose. What are the plans for the, the next activities for the Education Collaborative? Um, what is the next workshop? What, what should we expect from you? Okay, um, so the next workshop will be in June. Um, 2019. 19, okay. um, so it's annually? Yes, it's okay. annual. The workshops are annual. Um, and um, we will be announcing the, um, the um, specific focus areas and okay. themes and topics um, by December. Um, and then we op usually open the reg registration in January. Um, so we haven't really set the topics and focus yet okay. because we would work with the participants that came in 2018 and also 2017 to figure out, okay, which specific topics and themes, you know, are coming out of the work we've already done, done okay. so implemented. Because really, like I said, the, the, the facilitators are the participants. Okay. So the goal you set, you implemented it. What did you learn from it? What's different? What do you want to share with that? 
with us and then that becomes the themes and the focus for next year um so i guess um i will update you on the specific themes okay. in december this year okay <laughs> all right so mr benjamin when i come to you before next year i know you are working on a project with them <laughs> what should i expect from your project well we are looking at how to make learning and teaching more engaging in class okay so we have started a project we set that objective so we are carrying out some research between myself and rose and some of our students to see how we can make learn much more engaged especially in larger classes compared okay. to what they do we have 250 300 in a class sometimes it becomes so congested you can't move around so how best can we teach and make students uh, learning and engaging in a classroom. Okay, so can you share with us how do you think you would, you would do um, that? So that any we, university that is watching when, this would when, tap in? At the last collaborative, we picked some ideas from uh, Kepler. Okay. Uh, they use uh, Randa. They use technology to help students. So aside the typical classroom setting, you could also track students' learning and engagement on uh, uh, using IT. So there are software that are available where they can learn certain courses, programs, and monitor their progress. They are what they call self-based learning. And okay. these are all things we are looking at and seeing how best we can also incorp incorporate that in what we do at HEU. Okay, amazing. Um, Eva? Yeah, one of the facilitators taught us one very good, all of us use WhatsApp. We use WhatsApp for chatting. Mm -hmm. Have we ever used for dis discussion of our assignment questions? That was one of the very good takeaways which we, which we uh, had. You know, so we can use technology to the maximum to make sure that we not only groom our students towards whatever they're learning, but also okay. the entrepreneurial skills. You know, so now uh, we have so many people. So as uh, Rost said, you know, we could have some online help. Like now, all of us are quoting different people from different continents in Africa. So we have learned. So that means we don't have to go to Rwanda to learn from them, but we can just connect. Yes, from the connection. Chairs, so that is one thing which we take. Great. Let me let me come to you also. Yeah. Um, also, the Kepler group from Rwanda mm -hmm. opened my eyes to self student paced learning. I guess. Okay. Okay. Um, so self, -paced self paced learning. Self -paced All right. <laughs> so, in my engineering courses, I'm going to try this semester to see if I can have the labs laid out ahead of time, so that those students who for whom Lab One is quite easy, they can just go ahead and move on to lab two and go at their own pace um, okay. so that they're more in control of their learning. Okay. I'm going to try that out. All right. And then in Methodist University, before 2019, what, what should we expect from you from the project? If I have two things. Mm. I, I, in, in one of the sessions, we uh, was handed by Diane and David. You know, in Methodist University, we have all, all class of students. We have the adult students, okay. I mean, those working, and then the, so those from first from secondary school and also. Mm -hmm. So we are going to see how best we can design frameworks for the different set of students so that they can learn at the end of the day achieve the same results. Okay. And then the second project I want to work on, aside, that's what I mentioned earlier on, the large numbers of students who cannot go to universities because of their mathematics, science and English. Uh -huh. So if okay. they uh, just want to come up with a project, if the student at uh, the uh, uh, university Admit them so that we come up with a, 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 pro, a program that can help them up mm -hmm. so that, that they meet the require, they, they can meet the requirement for, for admissions, admissions in the university. For, for that study. Okay. And I think Ashasi has a, pro, a project or a program like that that is the AIX where you bring senior high students together. Is that the, the rationale to prepare them for tertiary education? Um, it's well, you could say that's part of it. Okay. Um, um, another part of it really is to, let me say, to give them a taste of, you know, what it would be mm. to be um, to study entrepreneurship okay. or to study engineering or computer science, you know, um, and then also um, to give them new skills, you know, in these different areas as well. Okay. So, yeah, it's it's really to prepare them for university, but we we get students from even second year, third year of high school. So it's not always final year students. Um, okay. All right. Now looking at the theme for this year's um, workshop, uh -huh. we, were, we looked at three broader uh, themes. We're looking at making learning relatable, learning engaging, and uh, also right. very relevant and current. And I like the current. Yeah. Yeah. What were some of the challenges that came up? What were some of the things that you, you picked from all the presentations that, that came up? Um, what was the, the benchmark lessons from all the institutions or the facilitators 
or people who share their experiences as well? Um, well, one is we need to talk more at universities across the mm -hmm. continent, right? We, um, too, too often we are in our little, exactly. it was, you would be surprised at what um, a university in Zimbabwe is trying out, you know, or the University um, of Global um, Health in, in, in Rwanda. Some of the things that they are trying out um so i think that's one of the first things is, okay. is we need to talk more we need engage to collaborate more, more engage more exactly. you know there's africa you know is is projected to um be very very fast growing you know in terms of young people and youth yes. on our continent yes. in a few years to come there's going to be so many young people just so many um and we need to prepare them for the working world we need to prepare them to start businesses okay. not just be employed into industry you know we need to create new industries um, and really it's going to depend on um, how we train them at the university level mm -hmm. you know because that's where they learn to be critical thinkers okay. they learn to be entrepreneurial and ethical because we really need us for our continent great now let me come to you Benjamin I want you to call on people to join the next workshop by telling them what they should expect from from the, the 2019 workshop, even though we don't know what we are going to discuss, but we know that the experience for 2018 was it's amazing. Yeah. So I'll say based on the two experiences I've had from the first. Oh, you season. are you you are two time. <laughs> as a, yeah, I would wish that a lot more faculty would participate in the faculty sessions because okay. there are a lot more things you learn, especially from other universities across Africa. Um, you may be in Ghana and you think that what you are doing is super, okay. but when you get to hear what others are doing, you realize that you can incorporate a lot of things in what you do that will make your institution even a much better Thanks institution up. than what you thought you had. Okay. So I always had a lot more people join the collaborative. It's, it's been very, it's been an, uh, an eye opener for some of us. Um, we learned a lot of things on the first one. The first one was even much more compressed. Mm -hmm. The second one, because it focused on faculty, it made it even uh, much more engaging because you had new things coming from other faculty. faculty. The first one was okay. we had a few administrators, so yes, even though you have faculty, you pick a few things from administration, but they realized that everything we do in the university is connected. So whether you're in faculty or in administration, there's always the need to collaborate in doing, uh, carrying out your activities. Amazing. So, very right. good. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, Eva. Yes, okay, I think 2019, we have we are waiting for 2019 rows. <laughs> yes, I think, and we also should thank our organizations which sponsored us, because, you know, they have also believed in the mission. Okay. And so I, I wish many more would patronize yeah. this particular vision, and mm -hmm. so we will just get more people on board, and so we'll all be developing uh, very good, efficient leaders who own and rule Africa. Amazing. Your final words, Hita? Yeah, I think no matter how good of a teacher you are, you still need time to, to sit down, to reflect, mm -hmm. and be with other teachers and share your ideas. So I encourage as many universities to participate next year as possible. Great. Yeah, I also think, um, as I said, there's always an opportunity to learn new things. But you, as I said, you have to unlearn, some, you have to download some of the archaic so that you can learn new and things. refreshing ones because uh, you have to learn best practices as well so that you can improve there's, there's opportunity let me take the opportunity to also thank my uh, my institution for nominating me to okay. be part of this and uh appealing that this year they sponsor more okay. uh, more I was going to, I thought you were going to say they should sponsor you alone. <laughs> <laughs> they should sponsor more because okay. once, once you get a lot of mm. materials uh, uh, lecturers there, okay. we come back, at least we, we would improve. Okay. All right, now let's go to our programs manager. What should we <laughs> expect from you 2019? I'm not talking about in terms of programmatic um, lineup, but um, in a way of calling up to people mm -hmm. um, to participate in 2019. Yeah, um, personally, I'm very excited uh, for 2019. Um, 2017 was great, it was a good start. This year was just amazing, you know. Um, I really feel like this year we went to a different level with collaborating, with sharing. It was very practical. 
and 2019 it's going to be that and even more you know um we we will be aiming at getting more institutions from around africa involved you know um and also we are looking at um having student services okay. so not just faculty but also a student services track um you know involved in 2019 okay. because you know we need to develop the students holistically not just in the classroom so 2019 will be you know it will be great we know <laughs> all right and i know the project continues uh, it continues on and on and on thank you so much my wonderful guests for coming and thank you, i have learned a lot <laughs> and i believe this is so much important um we anytime we are looking up for innovation we tend to think outside our continent but i i heard you making reference to rwanda sure. um, the, the university that, exactly Zimbabwe. we have the best practices mm -hmm. on our continent and I think such platforms are very important that we come together, share ideas on how to teach, learn, and make our continent the best. Mm -hmm. So I wish you all the best, our wonderful participants, and Thank then uh, our programs manager. Thank we know you. that um, you, you are doing a wonderful work, and so keep it on Thank until you. we get there. Right. Viewers, this has been AU Talks, and we have been discussing um, education collaborative with Ashesi University and the participants as well. Thank you for watching. Many thanks to my producer, my, my crew members and then the entire team as well. Stay tuned. This is Amy Talks.